Robert Wexler. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. I, I just want to again thank you, uh, Chairman Conyers, for holding this important hearing. Um, I, I'd like to just begin by taking up where my good friend and someone I respect enormously, Mr. Pence, uh, just spoke about. And uh, essentially, Mr. Pence, uh, I, I believe, referred to policy differences uh, as being distinguished from constitutional issues or legal issues. And I would beg respectfully to differ with Mr. Pence, particularly as to three issues, um, ignoring congressional subpoenas, spying on American citizens, and whether or not torture is ordered illegally or in some other fashion, to me are not policy issues. They go to the issue of abuse of executive power. For instance, with respect to ignoring congressional subpoenas, I think it is at this point no. not debatable that President Bush has ordered his executive branch officials, such as Karl Rove, Harriet Myers, Josh Bolton, and other administration officials, not to testify to Congress. I believe that is an indisputable fact. And what has occurred is a set of circumstances where this administration has made itself immune from congressional oversight to a degree that no other administration in American history has done. Respectfully, in my estimation, that is not a policy issue. That is a constitutional action, and it is a legitimate inquiry to determine whether or not that abuse of executive privilege amounts to the constitutional standard of or required for impeachment. I would like to ask, I was going to ask Mr. Barr, but Mr. Barr's gone, I know. Um, that's why I said I was going to ask Mr. Barr. Um, I would like to ask uh, the other members of the panel. Mr. Barr, in the last impeachment, during the impeachment of President Clinton, repeated what was also said earlier today in terms of President Nixon in his comment. Quote, President Nixon was, when the president does it, that means it's not illegal. And Mr. Barr, to his credit, during the Clinton impeachment, his quote was, Nixon's statement, quote, was dead wrong then, and it is dead wrong today. Wrong, that is, unless one subscribes to the principle that the president is not only above the law, but that he is the law, end quote. The issue of refusing to appear before Congress, just that one count of impeachment, what is, in my mind, is that a, or I'm asking, is that a constitutional issue or a policy issue? And what justification can there possibly be to the degree that the president has employed this tactic to justify its use in the context that this president has done so. Please, Mr. Anderson. Well, it's clearly a constitutional issue. It's not just a matter of policy. And it is, it goes right to the core of our constitutional system. Con it's up to Congress as to whether its power is going to slip through its fingers. And now is the time to assert Congress's power. It's not waiting for the goodwill of another president, hoping that they will restrain themselves. It is up to Congress. And, you know, it's unbelievable in this body how people have cavalierly downplayed the abuses of power that go far beyond what was talked about during the Nixon impeachment, which, by the way, they didn't end uh, in the articles of impeachment. They weren't talking about criminal offenses per se, they were talking about abuses and breaches of trust and subversion of constitutional government. Here, 
It is absolutely unprecedented. It's not a matter of whether you like it or not. It's not a matter of policy. It has been a matter of egregious violations of domestic statutory law, laws passed by this Congress, treaties that have been ratified by the Senate, and the Constitution. We're talking about violations of those laws that prohibit torture, the indefinite detention of American citizens with no due process, no lawyers, no trials, no charges against them, absolutely unprecedented. Kidnapping, disappearing, and torturing people around the world, and then the FISA violations, which, again, they want to be downplaying those, saying, well, other people have caused the warrantless wiretapping of this sort. Never has a president in engaging in warrantless wiretapping before violated the terms of FISA, which provide that every instance is a felony. These blatant violations of law. I think Mr. Fine would like to ask that. I'd just like to add, if you include in what Attorney General Mukasey has come before this committee and said blankedly, we refuse to honor the congressional subpoenas that you issue. Uh, that by itself, in my judgment, is a clear impeachable offense. The Founding Fathers understood the most important function of Congress is the informing function. That self-government can't work unless the people know what their rulers are doing and why. And that can't happen if they don't appear before Congress. The President doesn't voluntarily disclose things. And simply by refusing even to appear, it's the equivalent of contempt of court, like refusing to obey a court order, which I think everyone would concede would be an impeachable offense. I think that's one of the things that that question points out, Congressman, is that you, I don't think you would need a very long period of time to decide whether what the president has done is an impeachable offense. It's open. It's notorious. You just vote. You just, you just need to know what the Constitution means. The facts are on their, on their face, um, contemptuous of this legislative body. Thank you. Ms. Holtzman? Uh, Congressman Wexler, uh, uh, I think if you take the constitutional standard for impeachment, what is a high crime and misdemeanor? Uh, Mr. Mason said that it was subverting great and dangerous offenses that subvert the Constitution. Subverting the Constitution here is when the, when the President, for no reason, not even a colorable claim, refuses and sub to give Congress the information it needs to do its job and obstructs the work of Congress. That can be an impeachable offense. If you translate it in an impeachment inquiry, in other words, if you were to commence an impeachment inquiry, and then you were to ask the President to provide the information again, the obstruction of an impeachment inquiry, the failure to cooperate with an impeachment inquiry, the failure to provide the information, is itself an impeachable offense as we established in the Nixon proceedings and in the Nixon precedent. So I, th these are very serious. And because what the inquiry, if you go back, what were you asking about? You were asking about whether the Justice Department undermined the rule of law by engaging either in improper prosecutions or by, by firing people to, because they refused to engage in improper prosecutions. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. My time has long expired. Thank you very much. Steve.